Hi, today we'll talk about forkless upgrades. Traditionally, when you wanted to upgrade a blockchain, like add some new functionality into Bitcoin or Ethereum, you would have to do a hard fork. Now, a hard fork is when everybody who's running your blockchain software updates their software to a newer version which contains this upgrade, so which contains these features that you want to add into the blockchain. Everybody who doesn't upgrade is uh, left behind on a fork, which is incompatible with the now new main chain. Hard forks are a difficult process, particularly because you are never really aware of who's running your nodes, who's running your software, so you can't really get in touch with them very easily and get them to update, right? They have to, you have to rely on them to, to keep up with your announcements and to keep up with all the, all the software upgrades that are happening and to upgrade on their own volition, of their own volition. And they, they have to kind of tune into this and be very active participants. But for a lot of people, this just doesn't work. And a lot of nodes, which are just in idle mode, they will get left behind unless they're upgraded. Polkadot's ecosystem, and by extension, any substrate chain uh, like Kusama or Polkadot, has a unique solution to this problem. Forkless upgrades in Polkadot and other substrate-based chains allow you to upgrade a blockchain without actually having to talk people who are running these blockchain nodes into upgrading their nodes. How does this happen? Well, with substrate-based chains, there is something called a WebAssembly blob. And a WebAssembly blob is a bit of code that contains all the logic that a chain needs to build new blocks. These rules, this, this code to produce new blocks is stored on the actual blockchain itself, like a bit of data. And all nodes connecting to this blockchain are constantly aware of this bit of data and of this logic that tells them how to produce new blocks. Now these nodes, these programs running the blockchain, they actually have that same logic built in natively into their native code, into their native Rust code that's running on your computer but they're also intuitively aware of the code stored on chain. Now, there's a switch in these nodes, which tells them if the code on the chain is newer, then run that code. Otherwise, for performance reasons, run your native code that's built into you, because native code is always faster than WebAssembly code. But this WebAssembly code, if it's newer, then the nodes will run that. So all it takes to perform a forkless upgrade of a blockchain in the Substrate ecosystem is to upload a new WASM blob onto the chain, which will replace the old logic of the chain. Then all the nodes connected to that blockchain will just download that new WASM code, that, was, that WebAssembly blob, and they will start executing the blockchain according to the new rules that they just downloaded, and they will ignore their own native instructions. Then, later on, if they choose to upgrade their native binaries, their actual programs, they will merely get a performance boost, because now their native code will match whatever is on chain. So, this is a very handy method of upgrading a decentralized network, where you don't need to have the contact information of people who are running your chain, or even exert yourself by trying to get in touch with them to upgrade their, their software. But how do we actually upgrade this code? And isn't it dangerous to just let anybody upgrade this code? That's where on-chain governance comes in. On-chain governance lets any token holder of a substrate-based chain propose a change to the chain itself. Now, this proposal can be dramatic, as in changing the entire logic of the chain by submitting a new WebAssembly blob, or it can be something less impactful, like changing a constant on-chain, like the number of allowed validators, or something similar. Regardless of which proposal it is, that proposal will enter a voting queue. And if it is seconded enough, that means if enough people indicate their support of wanting to vote for this, then this proposal will be tabled. When it is tabled, then everybody who owns some tokens of that chain where this governance process is taking place has the right to vote on this proposal. Now, there are different formulae which decide whether or not a proposal will pass or fail, depending on who proposed it and what the turnout of the voters is. But in general, if a proposal for a chain that happens on chain, for a change that happens on chain passes, that change will happen automatically. There is no manual, there's no human intervention needed. 
when a proposal for a on-chain logic change happens and when it is voted in it will automatically take effect at a certain block and unless it is of course in the meanwhile vetoed by another decision which will undo that decision so that's another governance process then and this is how you essentially establish the way to achieve runtime upgrades of a chain while the chain is still running so the chain is the chain is host to its own runtime logic, the WebAssembly blob. The nodes read this WebAssembly blob, and all the token holders of this chain can vote to change this WebAssembly blob to alter the logic of the chain itself. There are other mechanisms to prevent collusion and to prevent some other undesirable outcomes, but those are details which we won't get into now. These are the basics of forkless upgrades on substrate-based chains and the basics of substrate governance. Thank you.